riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. Mm. You know that's biblical. That's out of the Bible. Mm. It's talking about the return of Jesus, amen? Mm. And you know, I never thought that I would be an end time preacher. Mm. You know, when I first heard about the rapture, I thought, not in my lifetime. That's not for me. But we know that Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. And so for us that believe, we rejoice Amen. knowing that Jesus is coming. But in the meantime, and I love that song, it says, Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, I'm going to preach on this every time I get an opportunity. Every mm -hmm. time I hear that song, I'm going to tell you that the year of jubilee is a year of restoration. Yes. Amen. In the Old Testament, it only came every 50 years. But because of the good works that Jesus did for us, every year is a year of jubilee. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Every year is a year of restoration. Every year is a year of God's goodness. You know, everything that was lost, when you were lost in the world, you may have lost friends, you may have lost family. There are things that as we fight, there are things that feel lost in our lives. Relationships, hallelujah. You may have lost a relationship with a mother or a father or a child. You may think that they're lost in the world, but God says it's a year of jubilee, hallelujah. It's a year of restoration. That child will come back to church. You have taught them well. They know the word of God. The spirit of God lives inside of them. It's a year of restoration. It's a year of jubilee. Hallelujah. See, sometimes we fight in our own strength, but we've got to remember that God is doing it on our behalf. Hallelujah. Because when God said it, he will do it. Amen. And so you may think that my marriage it's going downhill. Things aren't going right. Amen. I think it's time to end. No, God says it's a year of jubilee. Amen. It's a year of restoration. Amen. That love you had when you were just girlfriend and boyfriend, that's going to be restored in your heart. Say, amen. 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 That joy you had when they walked in the door and you said, hi, huh? It's going to be restored in your life. Amen. amen. So all that the enemy has taken, your joy, your peace. God says, this is a year of jubilee. Amen? Amen. This is a year of restoration. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Fear how you? Huh? Okay. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your Says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thoughts to prosper you and not to harm you. Thoughts to give you a hope and a future. Amen. Amen. There are so many in this world who don't believe that God has a plan. And then there are so many people in this world who know that God has a plan for them, but have yet to surrender to the will of God for them. See, Often it's because God's will for your life is just not convenient. It's just not the right time. I heard the excuse that once I've changed, then I'll go to church. Once I've changed, then I'll serve in the ministry. You know, the first time I preached, I had never preached before. That's why it's called the first time. <laughs> and so... I didn't know what to say. I was just learning the Bible because I, I didn't grow up in church. And so joining this ministry, coming along, that was the first time I really heard the word of God. And so when Pastor Rona asked me to preach one Sunday, I said, yes, thank you. <laughs> Whenever I'm not sure of what it is I'm going to do, you'll know it because my answer is always, yes, thank you. That's what's time, amen? Yeah. Whether you agree or don't agree, the yeah. answer is yes. <laughs> and so the church was mostly in Samoa. Yeah. I didn't speak 
someone. I uh, didn't really know what to do or what to say. You know, I heard every week, I would listen really hard and he'd say, and then he would mention, you know, the, at that time we didn't have uh, Fifia Sosawani, we had uh, Fulu Fula, who was my Tupu. And so I would listen and I heard what he would say. And so that's how I had to learn. I had to learn how to preach from what it was that he did. Hallelujah. Yeah. But the Bible declares, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. See, there are so many times where in my own strength I just wasn't good enough. There are so many times in my life where in my own strength I just couldn't do it. But you know the Bible declares that I can do all things through Christ. Hallelujah. And so it's important that we get in agreement with God. And it's not about saying, oh God, please come to me and give me the strength to do what I need to do. Actually, it's about surrendering to God's will and saying, God, I'm going to come to you and you're going to strengthen me to endure what it is that I need to do. Hallelujah. Kind of sounds the same, but it's not the same thing. I'm going to say it again and I'm going to say it in a different way. See, saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not about saying, God, come to me and give me the strength to do what I want to do. It's about saying, God, I'm going to come to you. I'm going to yield to your will. I'm going to do it the way that you want me to do it. I'm going to say the things that you want me to say. And through that, you will give me the strength to endure. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, thank God for the opportunity. Amen. Thank God for his strength. Because sometimes hearing the word of God is so much easier than living the word of God. Amen. Amen. I mean, look at Jonah. God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach repentance. Did Jonah want to go? No. Did Jonah want to go, kids? No. Jonah didn't want to go. So what did Jonah do? He ran away. See, sometimes God calls us to do something and we think it is just too much for us. How can I do something like that? And so Jonah ran away. And only when Jonah was in so much trouble that he couldn't get himself out of it again, did he turn back to God. See, that's the great thing about our God. It doesn't matter what mess we get into. He says he will never leave us in this sickness. But we really cannot afford to be that stubborn. You know, God doesn't want us to get into such a mess that we go down and down and down to the depths of the darkness. He says that we are above and not below. He says we are the head and not the tail. He calls us big doors and not victims. Amen? He's already fought the good fight. And we came out on top, hallelujah. Yeah. So we have to know what God says we are. And we have to say what God says we are, hallelujah. Yeah. So we are victorious, amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Say, I am victorious. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. So see, if you wait until you're ready to start serving, if you wait until you are ready on your timing, then you're never going to be ready. See, that's the enemy's greatest deception. That's the greatest trick of the devil. For him to tell you that you are not good enough for God. You see, that's how the devil tricked Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. When they were in the garden, the devil told them, you're not good enough for God. He told them to eat of the apple because once you eat of the apple, you will be like God. Amen. That's why he told them, hallelujah. Amen. But they were already like God. In the Garden of Eden, Adam walked with God. He talked with God. Adam even had the mind of God. 
See, when God created the earth, he spoke it into existence. He said, let there be light, and there was light. And when Adam created the animals, it says that God brought Adam the shapes. And Adam said, that's a giraffe. And so it was. The Bible says, whatever Adam named them, so that's what they were called. Hallelujah. Amen. So Adam was already like God. But the enemy came and tricked him and said, if you eat of this apple, then you will be like God. And so the enemy comes and he whispers into your ear that, you're not good enough. You need to do more. You need to be more. But Adam was already like God. And it even says that on the sixth day, which is when Adam was made, on the sixth day, God looked at all that he created, and he said that everything was very good. Hallelujah. Amen. So man was already good in God's sight. Man was already acceptable in God's sight. And that's the same as us today, amen? When Jesus, when God looks at you, he doesn't look at you. He looks at the good works that Jesus has done. And so you are acceptable in God's sight. You are good enough in God's sight. But the enemy likes to come and he says, Ooh, you remember what you did? Do you know what people will say about you? You're just not good enough. We have to know what God says about us. So we can say what God says about us. Amen? Amen. So you are acceptable to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I am accepted. I am
Does it mean that you can't come and buy some flowers and help with the arrangements? You know, you may not be in the team, but it doesn't mean that you can't come to the team and help look after the kids while they're practicing. If you know that they've been here all day, does it mean that you can't come and drop off some ipuki for them because you know that they're tired and they're hungry? You know, you're not in the youth, but it doesn't mean you can't come to the practices. Encourage the youth. I want to see them for them. Hallelujah. Lift them up. Offer to drive them home at the end of the day. We don't serve because of the titles that we have. We serve because of what God's put in our hearts. Amen. Amen. See, God has blessed us to be a blessing. Amen. Amen. And so we want to bless people in return because of all that God is inside of us. So you are blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I am blessed. 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 So you see, God has a plan for your life. Amen. But the only one holding you back from those plans is yourself. You see, it's not enough that we know what God says. Because there are a lot of people in this world who knows what God says. Before I was saved, I didn't grow up in a church family. I'd never been to church. But I knew scripture. I knew that God said in John 3.16 that for he so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believed in him would not die but have everlasting life. I knew that's what God said. So there are a lot of people that know what God said. Even demons know what God said. But in order for God's will to be done in our lives, Amen. our actions, our speaking, our doing, needs to line up with God's word. Amen? Amen? And so you have to say what God says you are in order to be what God says you are. Amen? Amen. And so you are blessed. You are healed. You are delivered, you are redeemed. Hallelujah, you are loved. You are the righteousness of God. So then your actions, your speaking, need to line up with what God says. So you can't expect to be prosperous and go around talking like words. Oh, I don't have enough. Oh, I can't afford that. Oh, I don't think I can go because I don't have enough money. So you can't expect to be prosperous and go around speaking black words. And you can't expect to be healed and go around speaking sick words. Hallelujah. Sometimes we say things like, oh, my bad back. Oh, my head. We have to say what God says we are. Amen. So you are who God says you are. But only if you come in agreement with it. Only if you say what God says about you. Hallelujah. Amen. So many people want to be blessed, but when they open up their wallets and don't see enough money, they start complaining about the lack. But the Bible declares, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. So whether we have or we don't have, hallelujah, we are still blessed. Amen. See, it's not our, it's not our tuna that determines if we're blessed. Yeah. It's not your bank account that determines if you're blessed. Amen. It's our God. Amen. Amen. So say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's good because God says that you are blessed in the country and you are blessed in the city. You are blessed when you come in and you are blessed when you go out. Hallelujah. That's what God says about you. You see, every promise of God has to be yes and amen. Hallelujah. See, you are who, you, who God says you are, not who man says you are. So you need to align your will with the will of God because he has a plan for you. Amen? And he declares that that plan is for good and not for evil. And that plan will give you a hope and a future. Amen? Have you received something today, church? Amen. Father, you say that we are blessed. Thank you, Lord. So, continue to talk to him, he needs to answer. 
not only does it show your support for a total of nine and your fit and your kids, but it also shows your respect to God. Because these positions that we hold, they're not positions that we ask for. These are positions that were given to us by God. Hallelujah. And because we say yes to God, He has placed things in our hearts that maybe don't make sense to some people. You know, I was uh, listening to one of the parents and they were saying, it's really weird that we would go to the school because not all of our kids go to that school. But, you know, what was the time? The fact that you came anyway and you were allowed your kids to come anyway. Not only do you start to us and what it is that we've asked you to do, but in doing it, it shows God your obedience to Him. Amen? And that's who we serve. See, we are just servants of God. We stand there as representatives of God. And so I love what, you know, Papa Ron used to always say, and actually it was the first message I ever received from God. You know, back in the times when we were at St. John's, and it's really funny to sometimes to remember, but the very first message I received from God, because back then I didn't speak someone. Back then, I only spoke English. And Dad didn't really speak English. And so the first message I received out of the whole hour's worth of service, only five words were in English. And I, I received that message. Amen. And I remember that the message that Dad preached just before he passed when I was lost in the church, because we weren't here on that Sunday. I was sitting there and he came over like this and he's like, Wives, submit to your husbands. Amen, Eliana. And I said, Holiday, amen. <laughs> See, because when I first heard that message, I did not receive it. <laughs> when I heard, Wives, submit to your husbands, and I know Maya and Deborah can vouch for it, I said, I'm coming to the pastor's house for lunch because I don't agree with what he said. <laughs> and I stood here and I said to Dad, what do you mean I have to do whatever my husband tells me to do? Where does it say that in the Bible? We spent three hours that afternoon looking at the English Bible and looking at the Psalm 1 Bible. So you can receive a word from God and not agree with it, but I tell you, when it is the truth, God will work a way into your heart so that you can receive it. Amen. There are times when I don't agree with my husband and he'll tell me to do something and I'll say, I don't want to do it. But then I'm doing it. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. And so, when you were stuck into the position, you were stuck into the person who gave that position. Amen. And so the position we had comes from God. And so God really honors that. You know, you may not agree with what? We, as you need to say, you may not agree with what the pastor says, but when it is the word of God, and when it is right, you will find that there is blessing in your study. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you sure? Amen. Amen. And so, you know, the Bible declares um, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that God has commissioned us that we will be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And so we have to know that this is our Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the town in which we are. So this Timuru is our Jerusalem. And it was such a blessing because I was sitting between the children at Timuru Sasko and one of the girls, she was watching the singer, the worship singer. And you know it was in English and she was just so touched. She looked at everything and she says, Oh, I could just cry. You know, that's how God. These are kids that don't believe. They don't go to church. Their parents don't go to church. They don't listen to the word of God. And so what we do in this town can make a difference. Amen? Amen. What we do in this town can touch a life. Hallelujah. Amen. See, even when the kids went to Oranga Tamaniki, you know, especially for us as Pacifica people, and Mohi people, Going to that office is never a positive thing. But this was our chance to show them that, look how important family is to us. Look how important community is in this, in this church. Hallelujah. And so those people, they couldn't stop raving about how awesome the children were. And glory be to God, amen. They kept talking. 
thinking about the fact that, you know, their days are hard. They deal with children all the time, but most of the time they're taking children out of families and out of homes. And to see our children perform and share the word of God and share the love of God that they have inside of them, that wasn't uplifting and encouraging for them. And so we're going to be witnesses of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. So when you dance tonight, young couples, you're not dancing to perform. You're dancing to show the love of God. Amen? Amen. You're not dancing just for entertainment. You're dancing because there is a soul that needs to be reached. There is a heart that needs to be touched. You are the hands and the feet of Jesus on this earth. Amen. You are called to be his witnesses. And so we need to remember that by going and supporting the young couples, we're also going to stay to our God. Because that's the position by which we were called to go. And so when we stay to the position, we will stay to God who gave the position. Amen. Amen. And we need to remember that the talent, the encouragement, the smiles that we give is because we have been called to be witnesses of Jesus in Jerusalem, in our Jerusalem, the timber rural city. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Are we okay? Yes. Yeah. getting started. Hallelujah. We're here for a good time. Amen. So the word God has placed in my heart today is that you are who God says you are. Amen. Amen. You know, so many times we hear what other people think of us and we think that's who we are. But God says, I know who you are. God says, I created you. Hallelujah. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. So we have to remember and we have to act out that we are who God says we are. Amen? Amen. So my introduction, as some of you may have heard, it was in English, it was in Samoan, and it was in Modi. So I speak Modi because I am Modi. I am not a Samoan. I've never actually even been to Samoan. Yet I serve in a Solomon ministry. Amen. Because that's the God that I serve. Amen. Amen. You know, something I learned early on in my walk with Jesus was that he can take the most unlikely person and use them for his glory. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, Moses studied. In the Bible, it says in Exodus chapter 4, verse 10, that Moses tells God, I am slow of speech and tongue. So that means that he was a stutterer. Yet God called Moses to go to Pharaoh and stand before him and command that he let the Israelites go. See, Abraham, he was too old. In Genesis 18 11, it tells us that Abraham and Sarah were not only just old, but they were very old. Hallelujah. And they had no children. Yet God called Abraham the father of many nations. And now Simon Peter, he denied Jesus not just once, not just twice. He denied Jesus three times. Yet Jesus says, I tell you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I shall build my church. So you see, God can take a moody girl from a Modi village who didn't grow up in the church, whose family did not go to church. God can take a girl like that and fill her with his spirit and fill her with his word, fill her with his power to be used in a sovereign ministry. To show you that if God can use someone like you, if God can change a life like you, if God can teach someone like me, then surely He can do it for you too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you all right, church? Amen. So that 
that's out of that scripture this morning. Does anyone want to read it in song? Come on, love. 